Blaine with the Kevin Blaine Real Estate Team. This is Leo Costa, owner of Guaranteed Fitness Plus. Welcome to the show, Leo. Thank you, Kevin. Nice to be here. Yeah, good to have you. <laughs> so uh, you own uh, Guaranteed Fitness Plus Insularia Prosperity. Yes. And how long have you owned that uh, uh, fitness shop? Uh, about fitness 11 shop. years. 11 years. Yeah. Okay. So you're the owner, you, and I, I know at one time you uh, competed in fitness. Can you tell us about that? I actually competed in bodybuilding. Bodybuilding, okay. Yeah, and it, it was a result actually from yeah, 30, 34 years ago. I was working on a, a family dairy, and I knew that that wasn't going to be what I wanted to do. And, you know, before that, I was an athlete. And I ended up kind of quitting on myself as an athlete. I was kind of stuck in my head. So I ended up on the dairy, kind of settling, because that was in our family. And finally I just thought to myself, if I could get a chance to do something that gave me that buzz that the sports did. Because mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to be a pro athlete. That was my goal. My kid ended up being one. And I thought, well, if I ever get that chance again. Shane Costa? Shane. Custom, Shane. Played for the Royals. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, he made it. And, yeah. You know, and uh, so I thought, you know, if I ever get a shot at this again, you don't know where it comes from. And I was like really out of shape, you know, being on the dairy now, out of college. Finally, I just couldn't take anymore. I built my own equipment out the dairy because I knew how to both. Mm -hmm. You do that when you're on the dairy. Right. And I built my own equipment. I started just uh, training in my garage. One thing leads to the other. I ended up in a gym mm -hmm. down the road. Met my current uh, business partner for 20 years, and next thing you know, I was competing on my first bodybuilding show. Wow. He was the one that said, uh, you should do this. Wow. Which I couldn't, you know, thought of being up on stage in a bikini, really. Right, right. I mean, I dropped classes in college because I had to get up and talk. Right. Anyway, so I did it, and after that first show, I knew, I go, this is it. I jumped, I mean, my, my first wife, I know now why she was yeah, I made her crazy because I had two kids. I said, hey, I'm leaving the dairy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start personal training. And no one was doing it in my site at that time. Not a soul. Wow. So I got into it that way. But I body, did my bodybuilding. And then as a result of that, from being in the gym, a lot of people were asking me questions mm -hmm. about what to do and, and right. diet and all that. So that's when the light bulb went off. I said, hey, I'll do this for a living. And I, I haven't worked a day since then. So. Yeah, that's awesome. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. And I feel the same way about well, what I do in real estate because uh, I look forward to Mondays. Yeah. Uh, and they say, and the expression is true, I mean, if you love what you do, you, 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 don't, you don't have to go to work. Wow. Uh, so you were, so at that time you were a trainer and, uh, in Visalia and um, also competing uh, at a high level. I ended up competing at the world level. The world level. Yeah, and I won at the national level and you know, first in my, my division in Las Vegas when I was forty one. Wow. And then I went on to compete in the worlds and I ended up in the top ten there. And I just at that point I got started a little bit late in the sport. So at some point, you know, because I'm running my own business now and trying to do that and bodybuilding is such a commitment mm. and that you have to be all in. Right. Something has to suffer. Right. And so at some point I just had to, I had to retire from the sport. But I went to the world and I had a great, let me tell you, it's, I had a great experience. I traveled all over the world uh, doing seminars and traveling. I had written six or seven training courses for bodybuilders. And so it was a great thing for me. Wow. I, didn't, I didn't make any money uh, in the sport as far as actually competing. Right. But from writing all the books I did and the right. seminars and all that kind of stuff, that's where I made, I, I probably made as much money more than some of the guys who are competing as pros. Right. So it was just a different way. And I, and I want to come come back to, to, to your books. Um, you, you competed in, in the fitness, which which led right into, or, or went hand in hand with being a trainer. Yeah. So you were a, a fitness trainer, a bodybuilding trainer. Yeah. Uh, people want to get in good shape. And I understand that you uh, trained uh, Kevin Costner. Yes. When I, uh, after I wrote my first training course, see, Kevin and I, I was at a movie one, one time, and I saw this guy on the screen, and I think that was familiar to me. This is after high school, obviously, quite a few years. And I asked somebody that I knew, he goes, yeah, that's Ricketts. We used to call him Ricketts. He went to Mount Whitney when I did. Oh, that's right. In the yearbook, I'm right next to him, Costa Costner. And I thought, you know, I just wrote this book. I'm going to call him, see if he needs any training. Yeah. I, I called the studio and about four, I just said, hey, Leo Costa called. Just, you know, if, Kevin, if you can give that message to him. Four days later, he calls me, like, we, 
And what the heck? When did you start acting? You know? So long story short, I said, hey, I'm doing this book, and I'll be quite frank with you. I like your testimonial mm. about what I'm doing. And he said, well, your timing is perfect, because I'm just getting ready to do uh, Dancing with the Wolves, mm -hmm. and I can use some training, and if you're willing to come down. I said, sure. So I started going down to L.A. at that point, driving back and forth three days a week. So I started working with Kevin, of course, I worked with, uh, you know, through him, I worked with uh, different aspiring uh, actors, you right. know. Um, so yeah, it turned out to be a good thing, and I, I did a lot of work down in L.A. area. That's exciting. And then we were talking off camera that uh, some of the professional athletes that you had worked with, Aaron Hill and... Yeah, uh, Lupe Sanchez. Right, okay. Um, the receiver, Michael Young. Yep. See, a lot of these guys, uh, Johnny Estrada. Right. From around the valley. Yeah. yeah, and you know they came to me in the off season. Michael Costa was another one. In the off season, they came to me, and I would uh, get them ready for their, their next upcoming season. That's awesome. Watching KB TV. This is uh, Leo Costa, owner of Guaranteed Fitness Plus in Tulare on Prosperity. Um, I want to uh, talk about the book. Can you tell us about the book that you wrote? Yeah. Okay. So I wrote several training courses. And I've been involved in, in, in training um, in, in some way for 34 years. And four and a half years ago, amazingly, um, I had three strokes in three weeks. Oh, wow. They paralyzed me. Wow. Yeah, my right side. And, I mean, I was floored, man. I mean, to, to think something like that could happen to me, I was, it was amazing. And when I was in the hospital, the doctor said, you shouldn't even be here for, for a couple of reasons. You know, anybody that has that many strokes in that length of time shouldn't have made it. Right. And with all the testing that they did, they couldn't find anything, which is pretty alarming. Wow. Really, you know, it's like and they didn't know. And you were in great shape. Yeah. I mean, you look at the specimen, you're in great yeah. shape. Roll so, level. so, you know, the thing that I had to do, which is in my, it's part of my personality, it, from my, my sport of bodybuilding, I had to find out why. So I just went back and I thought, I'm going to go back to the start mm -hmm. and figure out how in the world I got from point A to point B, which is point B is being, you know, like this. And uh, so I wrote this book, it's called Three Strokes in Three Weeks Saved My Life, because it did. That's when the unthinkable happened. I had three strokes in three weeks that left me paralyzed. That book, or those strokes, ends up being a wake-up call for me because I have a type of personality that is um, addictive. The sport of bodybuilding is very difficult, and that's what attracted me to the sport. But there's so much extreme behavior, you yeah. know? But the, the bottom line was this. The, the thing that ended up getting me was not the sport itself and all that, but it was the extreme behavior. I was under a lot of stress running two businesses at the time. And the chronic stress of that, uh, you know, I had some high blood pressure at, the, at that time. Mm -hmm. And it just, it took me down. And it, it took me down in a way that just got my attention, really, you know. And I tell people, I said, you know, the, the adversity, it's either going to define you or you're going to overcome it and, and become something better. Right. And that was my choice. And being an athlete all my life and then having that sport behind me, mm -hmm. there was no question. I mean, you know, it was scary, let me mm -hmm. tell you. And I went to a physical therapy session, and because of my background, I made a choice to do my own um, rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. And I did a lot of non-traditional therapies and things like that. But I wrote this book, and for the heck of it, I just sent it back to New York, uh, to a publishing company. I saw a commercial one morning, mm -hmm. I remember the number, but I just sent this manuscript that I wrote. And unbelievably, a month later, they said, yeah, well, you got a publishing contract. Wow. So I have a book that's published since on Amazon, Google Play, iTunes, Barnes, it's all over. Wow. And in addition to that, Hollywood got a hold of this thing through some connections that I, I have. You guys are connected. And it's, there's a movie now being made out of it. There's already, I've already been back east for the first table meet and just, you know, you just never know about things. Wow, that's exciting. Sometimes things that are, you know, on the front look, look, that look really bad. Sometimes they end up being something unexpectedly good. You just never know. Right. So, you know, it's just, I'm just kind of rolling with punch and enjoying, I'm, I'm probably enjoying everything that I'm doing now in a, in a whole different way because, hey, 
you know, it's like I, I could have not been here. Right. And so I enjoyed this stuff in a different way now. It's almost you got a second lease on life. Definitely. And, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because what in, in our lives, um, there are things that happen that we think, gosh, that's not good. But we don't see around corners, only God does. And it might end up being something that turns out really good. Yeah. Uh, so that, that the thing is that you have to look for that too, you know. Look uh, for the good. Yeah. And right. you need, you know, it's either adapt or die. I mean, you just have that mentality anyway, you know. Right. And uh, but yeah, it's you just you got to keep. And, and I tell people I've got a lot of uh, because the thing that was really uh, what I found in this there's eight hundred thousand people a year in America that have strokes, and. The, that's not really that bad. Out of 300 million people, that's like, you know, I don't know the math, I think it's 3% or less than 5%. Right. That's not bad. But here's what's alarming, is that only 10% of those people make an almost 100% recovery. Okay, if you do math, that tells you that 90% of those people live with a lifelong impairment. Right. It costs our country $34 billion a year to take care of people from strokes. Wow. See, that's the thing that's alarming. And I wasn't happy with that, and I wanted to find out why. Mm -hmm. So I went on the road, and I started speaking to all these stroke groups in all over the country. And I started finding out a common theme, you know? People, just like in, in with training, there's so much information out there with training and diet that is confusing to most people. And it's fractured, the information. And that's exactly what's going on with these stroke people because they don't know what to do after this happens. They're stunned, their caregivers, the people that usually are their wives or you know, they don't really know what to do. Sure. Time is of the essence. Sure. You know? And you if you don't start rehabbing soon enough, it shuts down your results, I mean, within uh, eight or ten months. Wow. But like what I did, I came out of that hospital rehabbing at home. Right. You know, not weightlifting, just doing everyday right. things right. to rehab. Rehab is everywhere. Right. And the fact that I did that with some non-traditional therapies, um, my results are still coming out. You know, because the way you you heal from things is you heal from the inside out and down. Right. The fine motor skills are the last things that come, and those that's still coming from me. Okay. But no, you know, most people. Can't tell right now, but I was yeah I was jacked up. The body becomes its function, and this is why I learned from from training. Mm -hmm. Is through repetition you teach your body what you want it to do, mm -hmm. and it will adapt to that. Mm -hmm. And most people don't they don't know that, so they're like you know they don't know what to do, and that is causing them. And then on top of that, depression and all kinds of stuff starts setting in. So what I saw were people that were bewildered. They some of them have given up. Some of them have had it worse than I did, believe me. But for the most part, they just didn't know really what to do, and they had given up. They were getting some bad information, even from the caregivers. So there's, you know, insurance companies. There's suppliers are here that need to all get together right. so we can talk the same on the same page. When I go to my, my my doctor and he's asking me how I got back, I'm a little bit alarmed by that. And I'm not condemning, and, and it's just that there's more information out there that this community needs to know about. Right. And they're going to get a better result. Right. That sounds like that's part of uh, your platform of what you're doing to educate others. Exactly. And, and, and you said that 90% uh, of people don't make a full recovery from, from a stroke. Right. And when, when, you, when you look at the fact that you had three strokes within three weeks, the odds were against you, Leo. Yeah. So, uh, so you're, you're, you're very driven, aren't you? Very, very driven type. Yeah, I understand. Uh, we're with Leo Costa. Uh, we'll be watching KBTV, and um, if you if copy the book, Amazon, iTunes. Yeah, it's on uh, Amazon. It's on iTunes, Google Play, Barnes and Noble, and it's called Three Strokes in Three Weeks Saved My Life. It's a very informative. I mean, of course, I wrote it, but I, I'm biased a little bit. But I think it's a, it's very informative because it, you're seeing it through the eyes of, of somebody who's gone through this. And there's a lot of tools there uh, and good information that I, I really believe can help some people. That's awesome. Uh, also, a reminder, if you, if you uh, want to visit or join uh, the gym, Guaranteed Fitness Plus on Prosperity. And we have the address down here so, uh, and the phone number. Uh, my wife works out there, and so does uh, several members on, on our team. And uh, I, I heard no, nothing but good things. Oh, good. Good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> 
Thank you so much for being on the show, Leo. I Absolutely. Really I enjoy it. Thanks for the opportunity. Absolutely. Thank okay. you.